everyone. So today we are in the kitchen and we are working on butternut squash. Today's project is to get this put up for the winter. Behind me on the stovetop, I've got some boiling water going and I've also got some pans roasting in the oven of the butternut squash. The oven roasting is a little bit slower. It's really nice to just cook it on the stovetop for three minutes. So if you're not sure how to cut open a butternut squash, I will tell you they are tough, thick skinned squash and it can be very dangerous to cut a squash open. If you've gotten this far, maybe you've watched the other video on how to safely cut open your squash. Winter squash can be very tricky. This includes spaghetti, acorn, winter squash, pumpkins, butternut. These are really great frozen for winter or canned. Uh, purees have to be frozen and cubed can be canned but you can't can pureed squash. There are no recommended safety uh, measures or guidelines for canning pureed and this is really good added into any kind of um, like spaghetti or lasagna item to sneak it in. If you've ever read um, Jessica Seinfeld's book on sneaking vegetables into your kids meals. So for time and space I've also got some going on in the oven. So these are just cooking through until they're soft with a fork. And it's best to do it at about a 400 degree oven. I actually just got this turned on. Let's turn this up. My oven automatically starts out at 350 every single time and then I forget to turn it up. So here I've got going on. See here we've got, I'm watching my YouTube today and I'm learning things. Um, we are trying to work on some tomatoes. So I've got a bunch of tomatoes here that are still a day or two out before they're going to be processed. And to keep any little pests off of this, I've got my bowl full of, I've got my bowl full of winter squash already. I wear plastic gloves when I do anything with anything in the squash family, pumpkins. I have very sensitive um, skin that gets dry and irritated with these acidic elements. So I am going to chop these up and drop them in the pot. I've got everything all gutted out here. Got my bowl of guts. We can sort through these and toast them. We can give them to the chickens. They're great for snacking and full of zinc. Here we've got the pots of hot water going. And if I do it on the stovetop, it's three minutes. Blanch it into ice water and into freezer pack containers. It can be plastic containers, it can be baggies, it can be your food saver. So the reason I am freezing instead of canning, um, I can can the cubed squash, but it's just the time consuming, the labor. As you know, we're a large family and anything that we can preserve now going into winter will help with the grocery bills. And it's just really nice in a winter storm to be able to pull anything out that you need, no matter what it is. So I'm using my food saver. So I've got your standard countertop food saver. They're really great, they're really handy to use, but you wanna make sure that your food is not so moist that it's filling up the drip tray. So the key to this is that after you've let it cook, um, you're blanching for three minutes, and then you let it cool in the ice water for three minutes, let it drain, let it drain for as long as you need. And if I drain it and let it sit for a while, that's gonna be less moisture to collect um, that it's gonna have to suck out of the bag. So about the bags, I am using the pre-cut bags and these are on sale several times a year. I just pick them up as I need them. If you buy these at a store that's not like your general supermarket, you might be able to get a better deal. I noticed that there was a really low price at my local Menards store. We use Menards for everything. So if I happen to see like a coupon um, deal, we have Meyer locally here in Michigan. And a lot of times there are M perks to be able to buy things like this. 
<clears throat> this is a roll of bags. You make your bag any size you want. However, you're heat sealing to close it and you are heat sealing again and you have to cut it. The machine has a built-in cutter, so that's real, just zip it across and it's cut very handy. You can get the kids busy and have them cutting it while you're working on other things. I like to freeze them in one to two pound containers. You can use it in soups and stews, anything you want. So I'm using the pre-cut bags and this is a double package that I had. Um, let's see. This is the quart size container and it will freeze anywhere from one to two pounds. Well, I can do less if I want, but you can fit quite a bit in here. I've got some water splashing behind me, so I'm just gonna turn the heat down real quick. So my roasted oven trays from in the oven are pulled out and they're cooling down now so that they will be at a safer temperature for me to handle. In the meantime, while those are cooking, cooling, or in the freezing ice water or draining off water, I can label these. It is so much easier to label your bags before they're filled. However many you think you might need, just go ahead and start doing it. I'm doing it in batches, one at a time. So I'm just writing on here the month, what kind of squash it was, and you can put any information on the bag you like. A Sharpie marker works best for this. If you're not familiar, they have a fine point. It works really good for writing on stuff like this instead of the great big marker style. I also have a really simple food scale. The kids have taken off with my bowl this week. George has found he really likes to load it up. So I am going to just be able to weigh this and eyeball it after the first one. Not a huge deal. Just make sure that you're zeroing out your scale. If your recipe requires a certain amount, just bag it in whatever size you want and label that, that this is for pie or that this is for soups and stews, however you best like to do it. get at it. Um, I actually wanted to go back and say go ahead and use the vegetable peeler to peel your skins off of your butternut squash because I have done this with acorn squash in the past and it was real easy to just peel it off with a fork or when I did pumpkins. This skin is not peeling so easily. The squash that I put in the oven is peeling a lot easier but it's still kind of hard and I'm having to use gloves with my paring knife, so that's really hard for my cutting hand. Um, so yeah, it just would have been easier to maybe use that peeler um, from the start. I just kind of thought maybe it wasn't gonna work out so good because of the cylinder shape. Well, sometimes you learn the best way through doing. And when I've done this in the past, it was just easier. I don't know what I did differently. I'm gonna have to go back and look through my video library. So, so the food saver, I let them drain really good, it worked superb, and we're just gonna go through and get this all done. So thanks for watching everybody, preserve your winter bounty, and remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>